So the next part I want to talk about is a little bit more advanced, so I'm warning you up front, and this isn't going to necessarily apply if you are a brand new person to exercise, okay? So take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt. This is more for the person who's kind of at the moderate to high level of activity. So you're already getting seven to 10,000 steps a day. You're already doing uh, you know, a form of weight training to help build muscle or even maintain mus muscle if you've already gotten the amount of muscle you want. Um, you're already doing maybe some hit cardio or maybe some regular cardio, okay? So if that sounds like you, this next part's gonna be very, very interesting and I think that it's going to help relieve a lot of the stress you might have around trying to burn calories or burn body fat through exercise. So there's a model of energy expenditure. So there's a model of how many calories your body burns a day called the constrained model. And the constrained model suggests that at a certain point, you aren't really gonna burn that many more calories through exercise or through one of these four ways as you might think. So let's paint a picture for this to make a little bit more sense and be more relatable. So let's say you're getting seven to 10,000 steps a day. Let's say you're you know, lifting weights two to four times a week. Let's say you're doing a little bit of cardio because you enjoy it and you wanna lose some more body fat. Like you're at the point where you're like, you know what, I've got another five to 10 pounds to lose. Let's up the cardio, let's up the HIIT training, let's do something like that. Well, what the constraint model suggests is as you get to the the higher limits, as you are somebody who's already spending a lot of time being active, the amount of calories you burn is naturally going to be constrained by your body so that you don't overdo it. Now think about this in terms of evolution. If you were in a situation where you were constantly very, very active, but you weren't getting a lot of food, which a lot of our ancestors were, if you were to just keep burning calories on and on and on and on, but not get enough calories to, you know, help you survive, you would die essentially of running out of energy, whether it's fat energy or food that you eat. So this is a very logical and a very evolutionarily based model for making sure that our bodies don't burn too many calories. So what am I really trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is, is that you're not going to out exercise a diet that's too high in calories. There's this common idea, at least in the United States, that you are going to burn as many calories as you can. You need to exercise to burn calories and, and that's how you lose weight. And for somebody who's a couch potato, that is true. You have to go from not taking hardly any steps a day to you know, getting seven to 10,000 steps. You have to go from not lifting any weights to lifting some weights the best you can. You have to go from, you know, not doing any form of cardio, not even walking to getting, you know, again, more steps. So for that person, absolutely exercise needs to be a part of things. But if you're somebody who's already doing this, you're already getting the amount of steps you need a day, you're already weight lifting, you know, two to four times a week, you're already doing some supplemental cardio or maybe some HIIT training on the side, or maybe you're adding another day of weight training, you have pretty much capped yourself for how many calories you're gonna burn a day, right? You're already building your metabolism up through building muscle. You're already getting a ton of non-exercise activity thermogenesis through steps. You're already doing the things it takes through weight training and maybe cardio on the side if you enjoy it. And you're already eating a high protein diet, a high fiber, moderate uh, fiber diet. You're already doing all the things you can to burn calories. So you might be thinking, okay, if I don't need any more exercise, what am I supposed to do? And this is where things get, because you're gonna have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I need to stop eating like shit. I need to stop eating the junk foods. I need to stop binge eating. I need to stop doing the things with my nutrition I know need to be polished up so that I can lose that extra five to 10 pounds. Very well might get to the point where you've got five to 10 calories, or I'm sorry, five to 10 pounds to lose and doing any less on the nutrition end just isn't worth it to you, and that's okay. I don't want you to feel guilty for not wanting to lose the last five to 10 pounds and being upset about that, absolutely not. My point is, is you have to be realistic about what you need to do based on science instead of just based on what, you know, some you know, weight loss guru who just sort of is existing you know, in the 90s and the 80s and hasn't updated their information or done any new research. Because the constrained model, while I wouldn't say it's new in the scientific world, is relatively new to the mainstream media, which is one of the reasons why I'm bringing it out into the, into the mainstream so that you start to understand, okay, I can't exercise anymore. I'm already doing all the right things. I need to really focus on my nutrition, okay? So again, this is for somebody who's already doing all the right things on exercise end and just needs to focus more on nutrition. If you're someone who's sitting 
you know, for long periods of time, you're not weightlifting, you're not eating the right, you know, high protein foods, you still need to do all this. But once you get all of these things down, it comes down to the amount of calories you consume, okay? Remember in, in a video I've done in the past, the total amount of calories you consume at the end of the day, regardless of where they come from, is the most important factor for whether you lose weight, maintain weight, or gain weight. Another really important thing to understand is that if you are doing a ton of exercise, if you're very active, let's say that you're getting 15 to 16,000 steps a day just because of your job or just because you're that active. Let's say that you're doing lots of cardio. Let's say you're doing more weight training than you really need to do to get the most gains. There's a very good chance that's actually making sticking to your calorie totals from a nutrition standpoint very difficult because our bodies naturally, when we burn calories, want to consume more calories. Our bodies are constantly like a thermostat. They're always trying to keep sort of a middle temperature, like in your house, right? You might like the temperature to be 75. If it goes to 80, you notice, and so you want the temperature to come back down. Or if it gets too cold, you want to raise the temperature so it becomes a little bit more manageable. So your body does the same thing when it comes to how many calories you burn and how many calories you consume. Naturally speaking, or in most cases, the more calories you burn, the more you're gonna to wanna to eat. So the excess amount of, of exercise that you're doing could actually be the reason why your appetite is so strong, leading you to eat more calories. So I don't have any like hard science to back this up, but just as an anecdotal thing, because I've been working in gyms for five to six years now, this is something that I've seen is that the more time someone puts into exercise, the harder it is to maintain their nutrition the harder it is to maintain their total calories. So what I'll have a lot of my clients do, like I've worked with plenty of people who would, you know, maybe not be considered over training, but are definitely putting way too much time into exercise and trying to burn too many calories. I actually tell them to exercise less and actually hit a calorie target that makes sense. And every single one of them have come back saying, holy crap, I'm not ravenous at the end of the day. I'm not trying to eat every single thing when I get home from work because I'm not doing a ton of cardio. I'm not doing a ton of HIIT training. I do my weight resistance training. I do what I need to do and then I'm done with it and I focus the rest of my time on my nutrition. And that is a very powerful thing to realize because there's this common idea that you have to burn a crap ton of calories in order to lose weight when in reality you have to actually burn calories intelligently know what you're doing and don't worry about doing any more because it's gonna be capped. There's only so many calories your body is going to allow you to burn before it starts constraining it. Or in other words, sort of capping it off to the point where you're, you're really not gonna burn that many more calories through exercise. You have to do uh, a manipulation with your calorie intake or total calories.